Thompson wins it in overtime. Brady can jump, breakaway shoots, scores! Welcome to Sens Talk. My name is Brandon and I am your host tonight. Ottawa took on the Boston Bruins and you guessed it, a massive game. Going this one, Ottawa finds themselves only six points out of the final wildcard spot chasing the Florida Panthers, not the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Florida Panthers. Now that's really interesting. Throughout this entire last couple of months, during this very hectic playoff race, we'll call it, Ottawa has been only chasing the New York Islanders and the Pittsburgh Penguins. But as of late, the Florida Panthers have really gotten hot and have come out of nowhere to steal that second wildcard spot. So Ottawa, even if they don't make the playoffs this year, and by the way, it's very slim of a chance that they do, even if they don't make the playoffs, I'd still love to see them play spoiler and push a team like the Penguins out of a playoff spot. If you're a Sens fan, you're probably like me. I absolutely hate, I despise the Pittsburgh Penguins. And I consider the season a success if we push them out of the playoffs in itself. So, uh, look, Ottawa, six points out of a playoff spot going into this game with a win. Four points. They play two more games against the Florida Panthers. They both have 12 games remaining. So if they win this game and they have two more games, like I said, against the Panthers... Who knows? It's certainly possible, but you got to win tonight before we even think about these playoff scenarios. Because look, like I just said, it's a long shot for Ottawa and they really got to win basically all 12 of these remaining games to really have a realistic shot at making the playoffs. And that's me just being very blunt about it. So look, we're more likely than not going to be playing spoiler, but we're out of the race for Connor Bedard. Let's be honest. We're not getting the first overall pick. And if we do, I mean, I'd love for this clip to be out there for the rest of my life. I'd love to be wrong about it. I'm probably not going to be wrong about that, though. So let's just win these games. And more importantly, let's stay competitive until the end. That's good experience for our players. Uh, If we're not going to make the playoffs, at least have the games at the end of the season be important. I don't want another pushover last 10 or so games like we've seen the last few years. I want Ottawa up until the last few games in the thick of the playoff race. Now, Ottawa's lineup tonight is far different than last night's. Firstly, Dylan Ferguson's out with an illness, non-COVID-related, however, so that's good. Uh... A little birdie says that might be a hangover for the guy after celebrating last night. That's pure speculation. I would not blame him, however, for having a few pops after last night's game. He absolutely earned it, but once again, that's just speculation. I have no reason to believe that's the truth. Other than that, really, Greg is on the third line, but as the right winger with Dylan Gumbrell down the middle on that line, and Shane Pinto has moved up to the second line as the center, and Mark Haslick is inserted back in the lineup as the fourth line center, as Julian Gauthier is out of the lineup, and Patrick Brown is there on the fourth line left wing position. Let's go to the first period of play in eight minutes in. Dylan Gumbrell, his first goal in 50 games on a wraparound goal here. Pass Linus Allmark gives Ottawa the opening goal. It's 1 0 Senators. A beautiful play here from Dylan Gambrell. High hockey IQ play here for Gamby. And more importantly, it's really smart there from Gambrell on this wraparound to notice that Allmark was off his post and the bank it in off him and in. He could have passed it back to the point like you do 9 out of 10 times, but Gambrell noticed the opening, took advantage, and capitalized as Ottawa strikes. It's 1 0. But unfortunately, Ottawa's lead would be short lived. Ottawa would take a 5 on 3, 2. Penalties back-to-back, four minutes later, and of course the Boston Bruins will capitalize. Then home from the point, takes the shot, deflects to David Krejci, who makes no mistake about it, jams it home. The Bruins tie it. It's 1-1, as David Krejci makes no mistake about it. Four minutes later after that, the Bruins continue their onslaught as Brad Marchand with a beautiful feed to Jake DeBrusque, who had Kachuk on him, but Kachuk lost him. DeBrusque beats right by him. Backhand forehand move. 2-1 Bruins. And suddenly the Bruins lead for the first time tonight. And in a matter of six to eight minutes, Ottawa, after a great start where they were out shooting the Boston Bruins, 8-1 to one in the first seven minutes of play. They got that opening goal from Dylan Gambrell. They give up back-to-back goals after giving up back-to-back penalties uh, in the last 10 minutes of the first period. So Ottawa had to bounce back in the second period of play because they really started off hot. But this is the Boston Bruins. You can't be giving them a 5-on-3. They're obviously going to capitalize and shift the momentum, which is exactly what happened. But we'll go to the second period of play. And Ottawa did not get anything going there in terms of scoring. But same goes for the Bruins. 2-1 still after 40 minutes of play. Ottawa in that period, however, would continue to pepper the Bruins with shots. They had 17 shots in that period and 35 shots through two periods of play. Ottawa, frankly, looked fantastic, especially in a back-to-back situation. Last night, they had like 20 total shots against uh, Trish and Jari and the Pittsburgh Penguins. They essentially doubled that in 40 minutes of play in this back-to-back, in the second game of a back-to-back. So really impressive for Ottawa and a real big rebound game. Look, I know Ottawa won yesterday, 
let's be honest, they didn't play their best, didn't deserve the win. Ferguson is the reason they won that game, stole them the two points. They clearly wanted to show uh, a better effort tonight, and that's exactly what they did in the first 40 minutes of play. Unfortunately, in the third period, Ottawa would only muster like three to five shots. Uh, the tank clearly was emptied. Uh, they were exhausted. It was very obvious, playing much more of a defensive game, as Ottawa will lose to the Boston Bruins 2-1 to one in a really tough, tough loss here, where Ottawa, look, they started off hot, gave up a couple penalties, ended up paying for those two penalties with two goals for the Bruins, including the game-winning goal. But there's still some positives to take away from this game. Firstly, after giving up that second goal of the game, Matt Sogard made 22 straight stops. And my goodness, he saved Ottawa's tail time and time and time and time again tonight. Matt Sogard was fantastic, and he's frankly one of the only reasons Ottawa had a real shot to win this game up until the final second of the game because you know like I just said 22 straight saves is great 33 overall uh, on the night for Matt Sogard but look Ottawa tonight defensively was not great and I understand they're on a back-to-back -back situation but they gave far too much open ice through the middle and especially the lanes to the net it was so easy for Boston, Pasternak, Krejci, all these guys, to drive to the Ottawa Senator net. Matt Sogard often was forced to make some key stops, being aggressive, coming out to the top of the crease, and really doing a great job at reacting to those pucks, smothering them, not giving a big rebounds, but more importantly, tracking them well and making the big stops in close. Unfortunately for Matt Sogard, it wasn't enough, as Ottawa couldn't get any offense going, but more importantly, defensively, once again, you just can't give a team like the Boston Bruins that many open lanes to the net. You just can't. Because luckily, Matt Sogard was on one tonight, making some huge stops. But more likely than not, a team like the Boston Bruins will capitalize and capitalize often on those type of chances. And those chances happen far too often throughout the game. It wasn't just in the third period. Throughout the game. So Matt Sogard really played a great game. And I think this is a game for Matt Sogard to build off of. I think especially after Dylan Ferguson's game last night, I'm sure Sogard was kind of feeling the heat after that. He doesn't want to lose the net. He's still the future of the Ottawa Sanders in that, in my opinion. Him and Levy Merlinen, will, they'll battle it out in the next few years, no doubt, in my opinion. But, I mean, in the short term, you don't want to lose your net. You don't want to lose your trust in your goaltender. So I'm sure Matt Sogard wanted to put in a hell of an effort to put a bit of a statement game there, and he did. He did. He gave Ottawa a chance to win up until the final second. So kudos to Matt Sogard. I really hope he can build off this game as well. Uh, because frankly, once again, he was the only reason Ottawa had a real chance to win this game up until the final second. Tonight, Matt Sogard, I think, looked much better, especially up high. His glove hand looked fantastic. Some key stops with the glove alone. But more importantly, just the confidence. He didn't look small in the net anymore. He looked big, spread out, confident, aggressive. And that's the Matt Sogard we all know and love. So once again, I really hope this is a building block for Sogard. And if he starts on Thursday against the Tampa Bay Lightning, hopefully he can continue this positive momentum. But we'll see. Maybe Ferguson draws in for that one. But uh, regardless, not much to say other than that. Uh, Ottawa tonight, they played really well overall offensively. No arguments or any uh, critiques there. I think they played very well offensively. Um, but defensively, I mean, they held their own with the Boston Bruins, no doubt. They uh, they weren't chasing the game often, especially in the neutral zone. Ottawa was doing a good job at jamming the Boston Bruin lanes. But at the same time, when Boston was in our offensive zone, I mean, you had to rely on Matt Sogard to stop the whistle because Ottawa just couldn't get anything going in the defensive zone. They couldn't push them out. And more importantly, they couldn't force them away from driving to the front of the net. So uh, Boston's a great team. It's going to happen. But defensively, just need to see better production from this team. Consistently this year, they've been doing the same things, allowing players to drive to the net without any question or effort. So uh, they just got to make it harder for teams to get to the net, um, and they got to make it much easier for their goaltenders to make some stops. So besides that, I will see you on Thursday when Ottawa takes on the Tampa Bay Lightning. I'll see you all then. Go Suns go.